Supposed Bible Contradiction What did Paul do after his conversion? In the book of Acts, we read that after Paul converted, he preached in Damascus, and then after many days, he went down to Jerusalem. But in Galatians 1, in Paul's own words, we read that after he converted, he immediately went into Arabia, then went back to Damascus, and then went to Jerusalem after three years. Bart Ehrman says, Paul did not consult with others after his conversion, did not see any of the apostles for three years, and even then he did not see any except Cephas and Jesus' brother James. This makes the account found in the book of Acts very interesting indeed. According to Acts 9, immediately after Paul converted, he spent some time in Damascus with the disciples, and when he left the city, he headed directly to Jerusalem, where he met with the apostles of Jesus. On all accounts, Acts seems to be at odds with Paul. Did he spend time with other Christians immediately or not? Did he go straight to Jerusalem or not? Did he meet with the group of apostles or just with Peter and James? However, this alleged contradiction between Acts and Galatians seems overblown, and it is easily reconcilable if we are charitable with the text. First, Luke's statement of many days refers to an unspecified time span. There is even a biblical precedent that it could refer to a period of three years. There is nothing in Acts that suggests the period of many days must be shorter than the three years that Paul speaks of in Galatians. So Acts doesn't explicitly state that Paul went to Jerusalem immediately after his conversion. Nor does Acts 9.23 necessarily mean it could not have included Paul's trip to Arabia for an unspecified amount of time. To say Acts is wrong because it leaves out the trip to Arabia is an argument from silence. In Acts, Luke is summarizing Paul's time before he went down to Jerusalem, and he doesn't need to include every detail. Also in Galatians, Paul is not saying he didn't do anything in Damascus before going into Arabia. He is merely noting that after he converted, he didn't consult with anyone about his vision. D.G. Peterson says, After three years in Galatians 1.18, could allow for an initial period of preaching in Damascus, followed by a stay in Arabia, and further ministry in Damascus before going up to Jerusalem. Timothy George says, How could Paul have at once both preached in Damascus and gone off to Arabia? The difficulty disappears altogether if we follow the literal sequence of the Greek text and interpret immediately as qualifying Paul's negative statements concerning his post-conversion whereabouts. Clearly the point he was making was not that he went immediately to Arabia without doing anything at all in Damascus, but rather that immediately after his conversion, he did not go to Jerusalem or consult with the apostles there. Paul also notes he returned to Damascus after being in Arabia. Since Luke is summarizing the time Paul spent in Damascus, and since Paul goes to Jerusalem from Damascus, mentioning the temporary stay in Arabia is not necessary for what Luke is doing. Luke often would summarize long periods of time into what seemed like shorter periods. Notice at the end of his gospel, it seems he is saying the ascension happened on the same day as the resurrection. But then we read in Acts 1, that Jesus was actually on the earth for 40 days between his resurrection and the ascension. The same thing is most likely happening in Acts 9. The way Luke writes could be taken to mean a much shorter time period than what actually occurred. With regards to whether Paul spent time with other Christians or not, Galatians doesn't actually say Paul didn't spend time with other Christians. It says he didn't consult with anyone about his meeting with Christ. Thomas Schreiner says, Paul's point is that he did not query others about the legitimacy of the revelation he received. He knew without a doubt that he had been called as an apostle of Jesus the Christ. So if we are to be charitable with the text, Paul did not state he didn't spend time with anyone. He is saying he didn't consult with anyone on the nature of his revelation until he later went to Jerusalem. As to whether Paul met with all the apostles or some, this seems to be reading too much into the text. Luke can merely state Paul met with the apostles without meaning Paul had to see all of them. Just like today, we can state that a witness testified before Congress without implying they were literally before every single member. Peter and James were representatives of the apostles. Colin Hemmer addresses this by stating, It is, I think, needless to quarrel with Luke's vaguer expression. Or to ask how many constituted a quorum of the whole body. Luke says Paul had apostolic contact. Paul tells us who he saw, 
the other matter goes deeper. Here we find at least one suggestive implication common to both accounts, that Paul's introduction to the church was oddly limited and difficult. In the one case, he met with few individuals and was unknown to the church at large. In the other, the church feared him and disbelieved his conversion. Seems very likely these two things go together. Luke does tell us the church was suspicious of Paul until Barnabas stood up for him. This would make sense as to why Paul says he only met with James and Peter. Those two could investigate the matter on behalf of the apostles to see if Paul's conversion was genuine. So this is not a contradiction either, if we are also charitable with this issue. Some argue Galatians contradicts Acts because Paul says Jesus was revealed in me. The argument is that Paul only had an internal revelation and a change of heart, which led him to convert. And the appearance on the road to Damascus is a later legendary account. But in Galatians, the word Paul uses for reveal is often used to refer to a physical revealing. The Greek phrase for in me is ambiguous and can also mean to me. So this passage does not explicitly state Paul's vision was merely internal. It could be understood that way, but it's not a necessary reading. But given that he refers to Jesus being physically resurrected in 1 Corinthians 15, and he states that he has seen Jesus, it seems more likely Paul's statement in Galatians 1 refers to an external appearance of Jesus. Now, when it comes to this issue, one thing that is often overlooked is how much the letters of Paul in the book of Acts actually agree. It is a myth that Paul and Acts are completely contradictory. Both Acts and Paul state that he was a persecutor of Christians, that he was educated in the teachings of Judaism. Both Paul's letters and Acts state that Jesus appeared to Paul, that he was commissioned by God to preach to the Gentiles, and that he went to Damascus after his experience. Dale Allison also highlights another interesting correlation. In Galatians 1, Paul's account of his conversion has parallels found in Jeremiah 1, 4-5 and Isaiah 49, 1-6. Yet these same parallels are found in Acts 26, 17-18. So Paul's interpretation of his conversion is found in Acts. As Dale Allison says, We can be fairly certain that the author of Acts had access to a traditional cull story that included most or all of the elements just enumerated, a story that, even if expanded with legendary elements and revised by Luke, goes back ultimately to Paul's own narrative. If we focus on the similarities between Paul and Acts, we find a lot of correspondence, and we also find that the differences are minute and easily reconcilable if we employ the principle of charity. There is no reason to assume Galatians and Acts necessarily contradict. As Colin Hemmer notes, it makes more sense to see them as both historical and are merely different pieces of a larger puzzle. Thus, this supposed contradiction can be resolved.